Now, Julian Assange has uh, spent 10 months holed up in Ecuador's embassy in London, and the UK has spent millions on watching the door. He faces extradition to Sweden for questioning over sexual assault allegations, although no charges have been brought against him. Well, RT's Polly Boyko spoke to him at the embassy and joins us live now from London. Um, hello to you, Polly. What did Assange tell you about his future, and what about WikiLeaks' future? Well, one thing that's got the man excited is politics. As many of you will know, he's making a bid for the Australian Senate. There's now a WikiLeaks party that stands for truthfulness and the free flow of, informa uh, the free flow of information. And uh, when I asked Julian Assange about how he fancies his chances at uh, you know, getting into the Senate, considering that he's holed up in the embassy and campaigning is going to be very difficult, he actually mentioned that he's got quite a considerable interest in both him and the, Wikile and the WikiLeaks party. And I've got to mention, though, that pollsters have said that that interest might not, nece might not necessarily translate into enough votes to actually vote him in. But, of course, in terms of political goals, Assange was very clear. He says he wants to put a stop to the US corruption in Australia. So let's take a listen to him elaborating on that point. The current foreign minister, Bob Carr, uh, was a US embassy informant, even back in the 1970s, even when he was a member of, uh, a senior member of the um, New South Wales uh, Australian Union, uh, the current Prime Minister Julia Gillard, uh, who rolled the sitting Prime Minister Ken Rudd. It happened in part because she uh, sent her envoys uh, to the US Embassy, they spoke to her security staff. There was a constant back and forth in this year long sort of preparation uh, where she was. Um, ingratiating yourself with various players. Well, he's been, hasn't he, in the embassy for 10 months now. How's he faring up? Well, when I saw him, he looked very calm. He looked in good health, actually, despite, resport, uh, b despite reports at the end of last year saying that he had lung problems. And, you know, apart from the politics, there's been a bit of a creative flurry because very recently we've seen the release of the WikiLeaks Plus D project, otherwise known as the Kissinger Cable. So he's had a lot on his plate. And, of course, when I asked him about how long he imagines he's going to remain in the embassy for, he was very simple in answering. He he said, as long as it takes. So is there any indication that the stalemate, stalemate might end, in fact, and he would, be, he would be able to walk free? Well, you know, very recently there have been reports that Ecuadorian diplomats in a meeting with the Labour Party in the UK actually raised the issue of Julian Assange, perhaps in an attempt to get an, a guarantee of safe passage for Julian Assange in case Labour does come to power after the general elections in 2015. But when I asked Assange about it, he was quite sceptical. He told me that he doesn't really think that there is uh, going to be a change in his situation depending on whichever political party is in power in the UK. So let's take a listen to what he meant by that and to his assessment of British politics. The United Kingdom is a, a, a nation uh, geopolitically of institutions. So it's the Foreign and Commonwealth Office and MI5 and MI6 and the Central Bank and so on. This is what uh, controls the behaviour uh, of the United Kingdom and the media a little bit. Um, and elected representatives simply represent. I mean, they, they, uh, they represent the forces that uh, exist underneath in these institutions. Uh, and finally, Polly, what is the police presence like around the embassy at the moment? Because it must be costing the UK government an arm and a leg, isn't it? Well, when I spoke to Julian Assange, actually, according to him, he said that the cost of policing the embassy is tipping £4 million now. And actually, while we were filming outside the building, I got chatting to some of the officers on duty, and they were unusually frank. We actually had a bit of a laugh with one of the officers because he said that he worries that Assange could be snuck out of the embassy in an ostrich suit or some sort of fancy dress outfit. But on a more serious note, he said that he feels for the guy because he's stuck in a very tiny space. You know, when you see 
pictures of the embassy in the newspapers, it looks like a big, sprawling building. In actual fact, uh, it takes up just the first two floors of this residential block. So it is a very tiny space that he's confined to. And when I asked the officer about how he feels about the cost of policing the area, you could sense a bit of frustration. He said that, you know, all this money is going on watching one man when there are very crippling budget cuts taking place to police forces across the UK. OK, Polly, thank you very much. We do have to leave it there. That's RT's Polly Boyko reporting live from London.